Buckle up cowboys, it is the biggest launch of the year. Today marks the arrival of Shimano's 105 Di2 group set, a product that many of you and all of us have been asking for for years. Shimano has offered its Di2 electronic group sets at an Altegra and Dura-Ace level, the top two tiers in its road group set hierarchy, for many years now. This is the first time that Di2 has been brought down to a 105 level, which for many of us is the most accessible group set in Shimano's road bike range. There's absolutely tons to go through today, but we're going to kick off with the top five things you need to know about Shimano 105 Di2. But before we crack on, of course, subscribe to the channel. So every time we upload a red hot tech drop, you'll get a notification. Number one, like Dura-Ace and Altegra, Shimano 105 Di2 is both 12 speed and semi-wireless. Number two, a full group set is claimed to weigh around 2,992 grams, depending on spec. Number three, a full group set will retail at around £1,730 or $1,890. Number four, Shimano will now, for the first time ever, offer a nominally 105 level carbon wheel set as part of the group set launch. And finally, I can feel the keyboards being mashed as I say it, but Shimano 105 Di2 will only be offered in a disc brake variant. RIP rim brakes again. Now, before I serve you up a steaming hot spoon of tech porridge, I would like to know if any of those points come as a surprise to you. For me personally, I'm quite surprised not to see rim brakes at all as part of the group set, but we'll come on to that later. As expected, 105 Di2 has made the move to 12 speed, following on from Altegra and Dura-Ace. For the record, the whole group set family is approximately named as the R7150 group set, following on from R7000, which was the previous generation mechanical group set. At launch, there will be one rear derailleur, one front derailleur, one crank set option, which is 105 branded, and two cassette options. Of those cassette options, one is 105 branded, and that'll give you an 11 to 34 tooth range, and then a non-series 11 to 36 tooth cassette will also be available. Now, there are other 12-speed cassettes available within Shimano's range from the Dura-Ace and Altegra range. However, 105 is not officially compatible with the 11 to 28 tooth or 11 to 30 tooth options. This sort of makes sense given that 105 really is positioned as the kind of every person's group set and its intentions are more focused on everyday riding rather than racing. Nonetheless, to see such a narrow option of cassettes at launch is quite surprising, but perhaps isn't that surprising given that road bike gearing is generally getting easier these days. The new crank set visually looks very, very similar to the Altegra and Dura-Ace crank sets which launched last year. They have the same flat outer face, a really nice glossy black finish, and overall, they're actually quite similar to the outgoing crank sets. We have the same classic Shimano Holotech 2 construction, which sees two parts bonded together to create a lightweight and stiff part, and it's available in five different length options. At launch, the crank set will only be available in a 50-34 tooth combo. However, next year we expect to see a 52-36 tooth crank set launching, but the launch date for that is TBC. As has been done for quite a few generations now, Shimano 105's chain is shared with Shimano SLX, and that's the mountain bike group set which sits roughly at the same level as 105. In theory, that should mean that spares are going to be readily available from launch, though given the general state of the bike industry in the last few years, perhaps that is overly optimistic. Sticking briefly with the drivetrain, one quite interesting note is that the front derailleur is considerably taller than either the Altegra or Dura-Ace front derailleurs. I've asked Shimano for confirmation as to why this is, but kind of looking at the drawings, I don't see this massively affecting tyre clearance. Nonetheless, it's an interesting point and I look forward to finding out why. As I mentioned in the introduction, Shimano 105 Di2 is only available in a disc brake option. This is somewhat curious, especially given Shimano did launch rim brake variants with its Altegra and Dura-Ace group sets. However, putting my pragmatic OEM hat on, it's important to remember that the majority of 105 group sets probably will be specced on full bikes. Those who are looking to upgrade older rim brake models are more likely to be buying either Altegra or Dura-Ace. Now that is quite anecdotal, but I do think that's probably the rationale behind this move. 
if you are absolutely desperate to have rim brakes but also match it with a 105 Di2 drivetrain, in theory it should be possible to use shifters from either the Altegra or Dura-Ace range in conjunction with your chosen rim brake squidgers. This is all to be confirmed still by Shimano, but given, generally speaking, how good the brand is at updating its compatibility charts, we should find out soon. Back onto disc brakes, and the new calipers look almost identical to the new Altegra and Dura-Ace calipers. They're slightly less machining, they're a little bit taller, but they do get the new revised bleed port layout, which allows you to bleed the brakes from the side of the caliper. This is a genuinely welcome move, and it means that bleeding disc brakes when they're located on the inside of the chainstay within the rear triangle is a lot easier than the old layout. The pad to rotor clearance has also been increased by a claimed 10%, which should reduce the chances of rubbing in grimy weather. It's not entirely surprising to see that the calipers are only available in a flat mount fitting. However, non-series post-mount calipers will also work with a group set, so if you're upgrading an older frame set, you shouldn't be stuck. Up and onto the shifters, these genuinely look almost indistinguishable from Altegra and Dura-Ace. They have the same revised layout, the same sort of shrouded top face of the hood, and overall, they really do look very similar. What you do lose out on compared to Altegra and Dura-Ace is servo wave action. Servo wave technology has been on many Shimano group sets over the years, and in brief, it makes the relationship between lever movement and pad movement non-linear. Shimano claims that this improves modulation, but in reality, I rarely struggle to tell the difference. In terms of connectivity, it's pretty much what we expected. Out back, the front and rear derailleurs are connected to a single central battery. The shifters then connect fully wirelessly to the drivetrain, with of course, hoses running to the brakes. The shifters are claimed to have up to three years of battery life, which weirdly is a year and a half longer than either Altegra and Dura-Ace. There's no supplied figure for battery life in terms of shifting, but we, again, we expect it will be much like Dura-Ace and Altegra. Now, of course, that sits in quite stark contrast to SRAM's ETAP setup, which is fully, fully wireless in terms of shifting. Would you like to have seen Shimano go fully wireless, or are you happy with a larger central battery, which in theory gives a little bit longer battery life? Leave your thoughts in the comments. One final note on the shifters, and in truth, probably not one that's that important to one of five users, but you do lose out on the ability to connect satellite shifters, or so-called sprint shifters. These are little auxiliary shifters which you can put anywhere on your bike, you can have one under your saddle if you really wanted, and they connect into the shifters and allow you to shift anywhere. You get this on Shimano's other group sets, including GRX, but given 105 hasn't historically really been the racer's group set, it's perhaps not surprising to not see it here. Now onto the pricing, I'm gonna start this one with two big chunky caveats. Number one, RRP pricing is rarely what you actually pay in the real world, particularly with Shimano products. Number two, comparing prices to products which even launched just a year ago is kind of meaningless these days. Inflation, part shortages, all the rest of it has made this part of this video very difficult. Nonetheless, the group set is going to come in at roughly £1,730 or $1,890. For the sake of comparison, an Altegra R8050 group set, so that is Shimano's previous generation electronic Altegra group set, comes in at around £1,600 RRP. That means that you're now getting a 105 Di2 level group set for what you would have paid, if you're paying RRP, for an Altegra group set a few years ago. Mechanical Altegra, which, although it's a previous generation group set, is still available, will cost you around £1,000 RRP. Now, as I said, those comparisons don't really mean very much, but what you can take away from it is that group sets are getting more expensive. Much like SRAM's equivalent rival ETAP access group set, I expect we're going to see 105 Di2 on bikes starting at the very cheapest, around the £3,000, maybe $3,500 mark, moving upward from there. That's quite a shift when you think even four or five years ago, a 105 mechanical group set with nice wheels would maybe set you back a thousand pounds. We've come along a long way and recalibrating how we look at bikes is very, very challenging. And I think this is just gonna throw another cat amongst the pigeons. Now comparing weight is a little bit more interesting. If we look at Shimano's 12-speed Altegra group set, so the current generation group set, that is claimed to weigh at 2,716 grams. 
105, on the other hand, is claimed to weigh in at 2,992 grams. For those of you counting along at home, that is a difference of only 276 grams. Now, 276 grams is an amount of weight, but it's not really a significant amount of weight when you consider a whole bike. I think this is going to raise some really interesting buying questions when people are comparing 105 and Altegra. Ultimately, you do get some very tasty tech with Altegra, but the difference in weight is so marginal and that tech isn't going to revolutionize your riding experience overall. What do you think? What would you go for? 105 or Altegra? Let me know in the comments. Now, finally, we go on to wheels. Now, technically, wheels aren't traditionally considered part of a group set, but these are really interesting and worth talking about. The new Shimano RS710 wheel set range is available in 32 and 46 millimeter depths. We're yet to 100% confirm this point, but we're pretty sure that the overall profile of these rims is the same as Altegra and Dure's. The difference being that they're a little bit heavier. The rims are 21 millimeters wide internally, which isn't the most progressive out there, but it's still pretty good for Shimano, which is a brand which has been historically quite conservative with its wheel designs. The 32 mm deep wheels weigh a claimed 1,511 grams, and the 46 mm wheels are claimed to weigh 1,607 grams. Now, those of you who have been watching the channel for quite some time will notice I'm not surrounded by a great big juicy pile of 105 swag. However, we've been promised we're going to get the group set soon, and when we do, I will bring you real weights, a hands-on fondle, and everything you need to know about 105 Di2. We've got even more information on 105, including a comparison between Rival ETAP Access and 105 Di2 over on bikeradar.com. The links for all of that are in the video description, and I implore you to click on them because I've worked very, very hard on them. Now, that's all we have time for now. I would love to read your thoughts about the new group set in the comments. We will read them, we will react to them, and it may even influence what videos we produce in the future. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell icon so every time we upload a video, you will get a notification. Wow! Flip the table. <laughs>